It is the final week of the boys basketball regular season. Hello and thank you for joining us on Press Row. We've got Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz, I'm Matt Finkel. The postseason beginning this week in the Southwest District for the boys. The girls are already underway and then everybody catches up. We're all in postseason play beginning next week. What a year for Lima basketball to this point. And of course, we're, we're expecting both Lima Senior and LCC to make a run towards Columbus. Is this the best Lima basketball has been maybe ever? Let me preface this. I've only been here 10 years. So I've only been here too. In the last too, yeah. 10 years, <laughs> it has been. For a better historical perspective, we turn it over to Todd and Aaron. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been uh, here since 97, just so I'll preface that. Uh, I've been around longer than that. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I think it is. I, uh, there's no question that the, the early 90s period rivals it with uh, Greg Simpson's Spartans and then uh, Coach Segerson with his T-Birds going to state three years in a row. Uh, and so that period of time I think would be close. And this year is uh, still incomplete. Uh, as, as great as it's been, we still have the tournament to go. So, you know, Greg Simpson, the Hutchins brothers, at Lima Senior and LCC at state at the same time is what we're shooting for this year. If they can get that, then, then I would give maybe this year the edge because the, the T-Birds, of course, have won a couple of titles since then. Uh, Spartans have not. But uh, I think when you look at the collection of seniors from Lima Central Catholic and Lima Senior, as far as a class, a group of the same age kids, the talent level and success level and accomplishments, I don't think there's any question that this is the single greatest group of talent in Lima basketball history. Although I'd be willing to ask uh, Mr. Mullen and Mr. Shep for some input too. And of course, they've been writing books about the history of high school sports around here, but I, I gotta believe it is. I, I excuse me. You're getting choked up just thinking about uh, it. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> he, he's hoping we get uh, this year, yes. both of them there. You weren't around when that when that happened, but uh, 1992 was a, was a great run for both teams. And you know, I think, we got to remember how difficult it is. We all have them penciled in, but maybe it doesn't happen. And that doesn't take away from what maybe they've already accomplished because it's not an easy thing to make it to the state tournament, even though we are assuming <coughs> that they will. But uh, I, I think clearly the group of kids in the same age is almost <laughs> off the charts. All these guys are seniors together. It's, uh, it's amazing. I think that's going to be interesting going forward for both LCC and Lima seniors. What do they do next season with all these kids graduating? Right. Uh, you know, there, there's still some talent there for both, both teams, but at the same time, to have this group of, of kids all the same age, a lot of these kids grew up playing together. And they went their separate ways. We understand the reasons and the whys behind all that. But it, it is quite remarkable to have this group to graduate all the same year. I would say, guys, that, you know, just looking at this whole group together, it's arguably the best that we've had in our area. Uh, and even, you know, a couple years ago when you had Matthias McAdams, Tyler O'Connor, Tyler White. Maddie Mock. Maddie Mock, yeah. Large you know, you, you include that group of kids, even Aaron Kraft in there as well, in the group of kids then. But this group, I think, rivals it. And if for we do, you know, through the blessings of above, we get Lima Senior and LCC to state, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, is that going to make for a fun potential three days? Well, I'm the least qualified to answer this question, so <laughs> I've only been here two years, but I've really enjoyed watching both of these teams, and I can't wait for the tournament. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, let me, let me just punctuate it with this. There, there's nothing better than when you get teams from the same area or competitors with each other to some degree to state. We've had it with teams from Putnam County, uh, teams mm -hmm. from the MAC, and as I said, I can harken back to 92 when Lima Senior and LCC made it. Uh, it'll be off the charts if they're both down there together because then you really can come together. You know, Not that they aren't rooting for each other all season long anyway, but if they're both down at state, uh, you'll see all the, the entire city and the area come to the state tournament and root both of them on. Well, we saw that two years ago with Crestview and LCC really pushing each other to finish the Conference the mates, yes. And win the, win yeah. the state titles in right. I just, to go back to 92 to 94, I just wish we could have had a matchup between LCC and Lima Senior. Hutchins and company. Oh, in those days, you know, yeah. Against Simpson and company back in those days. Um, we thought the Lima Cup was electric then, guys. Whew, South Pier <laughs> Street would have been on overload, and that was already the hottest gym in the history of mankind to begin right. with. That place, they, they would have had the fire department on standby to hose people off. It would have been that hot. No doubt.
So who are your basketball player or players of the year? And I'm assuming maybe we might have a T-Bird or a Spartan in on this discussion at least. Uh, you know, it's almost unfair to to try and do this because it has to be Xavier Simpson, but that's not to denigrate other great seasons that are happening. And, you know, the T-Birds have a couple of guys in and of their own right. But to me, it's all about Xavier Simpson if you want to talk about Player of the Year or Mr. Basketball. And, and that's not to disrespect anybody else. I just think it's not a contest at this point. With all due respect to X, and he's he's going to be the guy. Right. I mean, you, you, you've got Trey Cobb barking right on his tail as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and really, I mean, since I went back and looked at it the other day, since January 1st, Trey has had seven games of t minimum 22 points. He's had two 27s, he's had a 28, he's had two 25s and a 26 as well as a 22. So, I mean, that young man has had himself a whale of a second half of the season. It is, you know, for all intents and purposes, going to be Xavier and rightfully so. But I think Trey Cobbs has a great argument. I also think Dantez Walton would be in there in the argument. And just from a scoring perspective, how can you not talk about Trey Smith? Right. Uh, that's who I was going to talk about. Obviously, Xavier Simpson is the player of the year. In my opinion, Xavier Simpson is Mr. Ohio basketball this season. But if you're going to talk about somebody else, Trey Smith, who has got an outside chance of getting 2,000 points for his career, also has a pretty good chance of becoming the NWC's all-time leading scorer by passing a, a USV record. I, I think Trey Smith deserves some mention in this conversation. But it comes down to Xavier since we've talked about it quite a bit throughout this season. Not only the what Xavier has done, but the way he has improved himself. You know, if you go back to a year ago, you're talking about Xavier Simpson. Oh, Xavier's got interest in him. Illinois, Iowa State, maybe Michigan State's going to toss out an offer to him. And then you get the Michigan offer quietly over the summer, and he earned that. And you saw the way he improved his game over the summer. And there's no doubt in anybody's mind at this point that Xavier Simpson is a major Division I college basketball prospect. And here's the thing. Everyone we just talked about is playing Division I, is committed to play Division I, except right. Trey Cobbs. Trey and Cobbs. Aaron, you might be able to speak to this. Do you think he'll get a Division I offer? He's certainly playing like he had, deserves one for he's his already, senior year. Well, he's already got one, and that came from Cleveland State. And that came over the summer based on his body of work going into last summer. And after Trey got hurt last year, remember in the tournament when he – the last week of the – or last two weeks of the regular season, suffered the separated shoulder against Salina, hurt it again against uh, Coldwater in the uh, tournament, then hurt it again in the opening minute in the state semifinal against CJ, had to have surgery on the shoulder. That is really what has been, you know, the holdback, so to speak. People want to see how he has progressed with the shoulder. You look at his body alone, not his body of work on the basketball court. You look at his body. He looks like he looks the part of a Division I athlete. Um, IPFW has been in. Northern Kentucky has been in. Several other schools, including North Florida, Tennessee Martin. Uh, Bowling Green was on him uh, pretty heavily before they got the commitment from the uh, point guard from Huber Heights Wayne oh, that yeah. signed yeah. Uh, in the signing period. Um, I would say right now that it's going to happen. Where? I mean, it's just going to depend on what school it is. I mean, there's been talk of some other mid-majors in Ohio that are still on Trey as well. It's all going to come down to, I think, the next couple of months. And if LCC's in Columbus, you're going to see the, the recruiters out yep. in flock, no pun intended, to see Trey Cobbs and see what he can do because the young man definitely deserves to play at the Division One level. And he, if he doesn't, it's going to be a darn shame. So who's the coach of the year or coaches of the year? That's I think you have to start the conversation with the three L's. Lima Senior, Lima Central Catholic, <laughs> Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln View. Yeah. Obviously, you're talking about the second ranked Hold team. Hold on, there's a the fourth two, L. Two. Lima Perry. That was going to get <laughs> to the job <laughs> Matt go. Tabler has done. <laughs> let, me, let me talk first about what the job Brett Ammons has done at yes. Lincoln View. They are your NWC champions. They are your paper champions for Division Four. Who thought Lincoln View was going to be your undefeated? They're not quite undefeated NWC champions yet. they got to take care of business at Paulding on Friday. But who thought beginning of the season that Lincoln View was going to be NWC champions? Who thought Lincoln would only have one at the most two losses going into the postseason? Nobody. You look at that team, there's not necessarily a great star. you got a great collection of talent that is playing well, and Brett Ammons has done a great job bringing those guys together and having them play cohesively as a team. I think Matt Taylor's done a good job with a very young Perry team. When you got that many juniors starting, you're not sure what you're going to get night in and night out. I also think we should talk about what Kirk Lehman has yeah, done in that defiance. That was mine, Mark. Yeah. Yes. That's an interesting take. Uh, you know, I'll I'll stick up for Q here just because there's a lot of great candidates and we could make a case. You know, a lot of times people downplay how good a coaching job you have to do when you are expected to win every game mm -hmm. before the season even starts. 
and he's navigated some tricky things. He suspended uh, Marquavius Wilson, had to deal with a little bit of injury here and there. Not serious injuries, but little things along the way. And to this point, they're undefeated, and they're track champions. And that's a first in school history. So, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll give you that argument and uh, put down a, a mark for Q. I'll stick up for Frank Hill then as the Minister of Propaganda then <laughs> with LCC. And, well, you know, it's, similar, it's not like you got to fight hard here. No, yeah. now, and, and the sim similar situation. Right. You look at the, the similarities between LCC and Lima Senior with these schedules this year. Yeah. Expected to win every game, including the matchups against each other. You know, managing, you know, se you know six seniors deep that, you know, could start just about anywhere else uh, in Allen County, not just at LCC for example, and, you know, taking a team that is at the same time still a little relatively inexperienced with its bench and only going seven deep, whereas in the past, Frank had the luxury to go eight and nine deep, going with a shorter bench this year and, you know, you know, having those spot pieces with guys like Mark Janowski, but I wouldn't even say that Mark's necessarily a regular part of the rotation, but to see them winning games with ease, just like Lima Senior as well, in a year where they were expected to do big things, you know, I think uh, Frank and the T-Birds have answered the call, too. And to keep them motivated night in and night out when there's yes. not a conference game to get up for. Right. Yep. They don't have. They don't get to go to Washington Township. They don't get to <laughs> go here or there, you know. It's, you know, we're going, to, we're going to, you know, Lincoln View. But it's not a conference game. It's homecoming for Frank. He could have been the homecoming king that right. night. <laughs> well, maybe not. Chandler Adams did have a little something <laughs> to say about it. But Frank could have probably been, finished a close second if they redid all the balloting. And like you said, Mark, I think Kirk Lehman deserves some yes. credit for what he has Definitely. done because coming off the state title, you graduate a couple of really talented seniors, and then you're gonna you're unbeaten right now in the WBL one game left, but you got a, you're at least a share. And Cameron Singleton was injured for a majority of the season, a large portion of the season. So credit to the Bulldogs and Kirk Lehman as well. Credit Kirk Lehman also for stepping up and scheduling LCC to finish up the regular season. What a great way for both the T-Birds and Bulldogs to get ready for the postseason mm -hmm. to, to go head to head against each other up in defiance. That's going to be fun. That's that's must see TV on Saturday. A no game doubt. you can see on WOSN. All right, we're creeping up towards March. Which college teams in the state of Ohio will be in the big dance? Akron. Cincinnati, Xavier, Dayton. How about that? I would agree with those four. Yeah. The only way Ohio State gets in is if they win the Big Ten championship game. Could it happen? It's not inconceivable. It's not going to happen, though. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, they you got to figure they, if you want to play fantasy land, they still <laughs> have two games with Michigan State and one with Iowa. Now, if they win two out of those three and they make a decent Big Ten tournament run, they might squeak in, but I mean, odds are against it at this point uh, that those, the Buckeyes those, will get those in. Those two ugly losses in December. Those hurt. And yep. They hurt very much. No doubt. But obviously, you got Dayton and X are going to be in. <laughs> Cincinnati's looking pretty good. And yeah. as you touched on, I think Akron's the favorite in the MAC. But as we've seen over the years, funny things can happen in Cleveland in that MAC tournament. No doubt. Let's close with some baseball quickly. Spring training, pitchers and catchers reporting. Any optimism coming from Reds fans? Should there be? Optimism for what? That's, what I, that's uh, the question. Not to lose 100 games? That's the uh, question. Should there I be anything to look forward to? I don't think they're going to lose 100 games. Uh, you know, if you're a, a fan of watching a team be built, watch guys develop, and to try to figure out how this team moves forward in the future, then there are things to look forward to. A pennant race is not one of them for Cincinnati. I think that's why Cincinnati is maybe one of the more intriguing teams this year, maybe a right. little bit more intriguing than the last couple of years because you don't know what the Reds have. And you got a chance to really see what some of these younger kids can do, what they're going to have down the road. I, I think the Reds are going to be a little bit more interesting this season. It, they will be interesting from the aspect of how do they fit these pieces into play around, you know, a guy like Joey Votto, who's, you know, seems like he's the only one left from, you know, the quote, old regime. But, you know, how this goes forward who remains to be seen. No Jay Bruce? Well, he's still around, too, for now. For today. Well, Bailey's coming back from surgery. For now. Yeah. Yeah. But May. he doesn't have his no-hitter catcher, so he's yeah, not going to have a no-hitter. Yeah. All right, well, good job, guys. Thank you very much. That does it for this week's Press Row. Enjoy your games this week, and we'll be back here next week.